When should you really be using a linear actuator on your robot? And when is it just going to cause you more headaches than it's worth? Get this choice wrong, and you could be sacrificing your robot's performance, or even worse, damaging expensive components. In this video, I'm going to break down the pros and cons of a common type of linear actuator that you will see in robotics. Understanding these trade-offs is going to help you make smarter design decisions, build more reliable mechanisms, and ultimately create a much better robot. You'll learn exactly when to pick this tool for the job and when it's best to leave it in the parts bin. I'm Brogan Pratt, and I've been a robotics and technology educator for over 10 years. I've seen firsthand what works and what really doesn't when it comes to building effective robot mechanisms. So today, I'll start by looking at a common linear actuator setup, quickly run down how it works. Then I'll run you through the key advantages that might make it the perfect for your design, followed by the critical disadvantages and considerations you absolutely need to be aware of before you commit to using one on your robot. All right, so here on the workbench, we've got a pretty typical example of a lead screw based linear actuator. At its core, a linear actuator is a device that creates motion in a straight line. It either pushes or it pulls. This particular style uses a few key parts. We've got some sort of outer U channel or framework that provides our main structure or protection from it. We also have some sort of uh, holder for this extension rail at the end. The extension rail itself is a piece of aluminum extrusion, and this is the part that actually slides in and out to actually do the linear work. The motion actually comes in from this motor with a gear ratio, and as I spin this motor, transfers it over to this one-to-one -one gear, and then it rotates the lead screw, and this end screw is attached to our piece of aluminum. And as we rotate the motor, it pushes that rail up and down to give you that linear motion. These support plates at the end here are simply what stops that wobble or your lead screw from shaking around. If you didn't have the support screws, then the whole thing would be supported on this one lead. So why would you choose a linear actuator like this for your robot? There are some pretty compelling advantages. First, and often the biggest reason, is high force. These actuators, especially when paired with a fast motor and fine pitch lead screw, can generate a significant amount of pushing or pulling force. With a setup like that, you could get over 22 kilograms of force. And that's a lot, and it's fantastic for tasks like lifting heavy robots, securely clamping onto objects, or making precise and forceful pushes. Second, you can get good precision and reliability. When you combine this type of actuator with a motor that has an encoder, and you should always be using an encoder with these, you can control its position very accurately. This means you can have it return to the exact same spot reliably time after time, which is crucial for autonomous tasks or any mechanism that needs precise positioning. Third, they often hold their position very well. A big benefit of many lead screw designs is that they tend to stay put even when power is cut to the motor. So the friction in the screw in the nut assembly usually prevents it from being easily back driven by whatever it's holding. So this can simplify your design because you might not need an extra brake or complex software logic just to hold the mechanisms in place. And fourth, they offer a relatively compact linear motion. For a given amount of linear travel, they can provide a relatively straightforward way to achieve that motion without needing complex multibar linkages, especially if you need that motion in a somewhat tight space along one specific axis. Now, these things aren't all perfect. There are definite downsides and some very important things you need to think about before designing one of these into your robot. The biggest one is usually speed. That high force we just talked about usually comes at a cost. These actuators are generally not the fastest way to move something linearly. If you need quick, snappy movements, something like a linear slide or a different type of direct drive linkage might be a better choice. For instance, a unit like the one we just looked at might take over a second to travel its full 200 millimeter range, which can be an eternity in some fast-paced robots. Then there are stroke-like limitations. The maximum travel or stroke is fixed to the length of that lead screw and that supporting channel. If you need a very long linear movement, these can become quite bulky and impractical really quick. And next, and this is critical, is the control complexity and the very real potential for damage. Most actuator kits like this don't have built-in limit switches or any kind of electronics that stop them from destroying themselves if you accidentally drive them past their physical endpoints. You absolutely must use a motor with an encoder or limiters, and you must program in software limits in your code to prevent that over-travel. If you don't, you're going to strip gears, bend parts, or burn out your motor. 
And it's not a matter of if, but when. And this is probably the number one mistake that I see people make when using linear actuators. They also require careful mounting and alignment. These actuators should work smoothly and efficiently, and to avoid binding up, they need to be mounted securely. Force ideally should be applied along that axis of travel. If you put significant silos on them, they could bind, wear out prematurely, or just not perform as expected. And the last thing, like all systems, think about wear and maintenance. It's not necessarily negative, but that lead screw and the nut are mechanical parts that are constantly sliding in contact with each other. They're going to wear over time, especially if they're under high loads or operating in some of those dusty or dirty environments. They might require that occasional cleaning, lubrication, keep them running smooth. So to sum all up, linear actuators like the one we just looked at, powerful tools where you need strong, precise, and self-holding linear motion. They're excellent for lifting, clamping, and making controlled, forceful pushes and pulls. However, they absolutely come with trade-offs, mainly their speed and the demand for that careful implementation, especially regarding those software limits to prevent that catastrophic damage. I can't stress this enough. You always have to use an encoder or limit switches and have those soft stops inside your code. When you're designing your next robot, think carefully about your specific needs. Do you need high force more than high speed? Is precise position critical for your task? Can you accommodate the control requirements and take the time to program it properly? Answering these questions honestly will help tell you if a linear actuator is the right choice for your robotics project. I hope this breakdown of when to use linear actuators helps you in your next robot build. If you found value in this content, please consider giving a like and subscribing to the channel for more robotics, programming, and design tutorials. It really helps me reach more aspiring engineers and builders like you. Best of luck with your next project.